I want to touch briefly too on the on the icons you can see there on the left. We have a range of tools that encourage uh, tutors and students to collaborate with each other through a shared notebook, for example, send messages to each other through a voice recorder. Um, we have a lot of data, which Thea will talk more about later um, when she discusses the, the, the management side of the projects. So every time your learn, learner logs on, you know what's happening. You can see the activities they're doing. You can see the progress they make. You can see the percentage of the course they've completed. It's all there at the click of a button. Uh, and then assuming they move on through our, our courses, they can, at the end of the intermediate course, achieve a city and guilds uh, certificate. We are endorsed by a uh, Scottish Qualification Authority and city and guilds. So um, there is that sense of uh, achieving something real at the end of it. Okay, Sam, we can move on um, to some of the customers that we work with. Uh, colleges, obviously, um, if we provide their own tutors or their own project management, or if we work with councils or strategic migration partnerships, we offer that ourselves. We work internationally, and I'm delighted that some of our Indian partners are here uh, this afternoon. Um, and so over the years we've been developing our platform and our software, we have gained uh, a number of significant awards. We've won a British Council Elton's Award, uh, College Development Network Award for Digital Innovation and various other tech for good. We are obviously in that space. Um, and of course, endorsements and accreditation from awarding bodies like the SQA and City of Guilds. Okay. Now, we're all familiar with uh, the, the challenges we're facing. They are overwhelming at times. From an economic point of view, then we've got an economic crisis at the same time as we've got a skills shortage in the UK. Many sectors are crying out for uh, for, for people um, to work with them. Um, and of course, we have people arriving in their thousands from other countries, particularly Latin Ukrainians, of course. Um, many have come with uh, significant talents and, and skills that we're not using, um, either locally or nationally. and, and Many of them get stuck in hotels and uh, and cruise ships in this case. So that's the sort of background to the situation that we're trying to to work in. Okay. So here, if you like, is is where a lot of them currently are or are when they arrive. Um, councils are budget is so being stretched further and further with more and more demands being made on them. Uh, migrants, uh, refugees often end up on waiting lists or English language classes. And in some cases, they couldn't even get to a class because geographically they're spread across a wide area and, and traveling is and both expensive and, and difficult. Okay. So just to sum up then, um, many, many of our uh, learners have little or no English and I'll explain a bit later on how we deal with that. We do have a, a unique course that takes people with absolutely no English and, and teaches them uh, the basics before we can move on uh, to the more traditional levels that you would normally um, encounter. There isn't enough provision in, in colleges or um, other, other forms of uh, training centres. And so therefore they do get stuck, unable to communicate. And most of them, of course, are wanting to find work to be able to lead independent lives. And we have um, particularly exciting example, Thea will talk about later, when we can work with an employer, just how we can provide that end to end solution from no English through eventually to finding suitable work. And that is done through um, the digital learning hub, uh, and we'll go through the various steps of just establishing their, their English level, giving them a balance between self-study and live teaching, ideally more than one hour a week. Um, that's the minimum that we've been providing, tracking their progress and taking them from a basic level to independent user, and hopefully moving on then to, uh, to employment. Thanks, Sam. Can we move on to the next one? Right. Okay, so what I want to do here is, uh, again, just to outline briefly that we're not talking in abstract terms here. We have been working very closely with a couple of um, partners, and again, Thea will give you more information uh, on how this works out in, in reality. But the challenge that was facing Dundee Council was a sudden influx of Ukrainian refugees who were widely dispersed 
across the area with very little English. And at that point, they themselves had no tutors. So we worked closely with them um, to enrol uh, these beginners onto our basic skills course. We organised one hour a week of live classes with we were really fortunate to um, to be able to employ some wonderful uh, Ukrainian tutors and you'll meet one of them later. And what I was saying about being able to make progress quickly with what, three and a half months later, we had moved 42% of them from the beginner stage through to the intermediate stage. And that might sound rather ambitious, but we have the stats to prove that. Um, we had um, moved nine, over 90% of them from uh, A to B level in listening and reading. And in all language skills, which we tested at the end, that's writing and speaking as well. Again, we had moved a significant number from beginner to a higher level. And the resourcing that that required was from our part, three tutors, a project manager, our platform, of course, and our software. And on Dundee's side, we had um, one or two people helping there with the onboarding and also looking at the, uh, at the progress that they were making. OK. So what is it we've actually got to help in, in practical terms? And we have our I've mentioned the digital learning hub. It's a effectively a learning management system that we've developed just for English language learners. So it's designed to be simple, easy, intuitive, uh, and not this mass of, uh, you know, a, a huge VLE or language management system that you might, learning management system you might find in a, in a large college. So from an admin point of view, you've got complete control over your learners. You can bring them onto the, the platform. You can take them off when they're finished um, and ma manage them in groups and assign tutors to them and so on. And there's a comprehensive knowledge base to help you answer any questions you might have in relation to that. OK. And then from a teacher's point of view, um, there's a variety of tools that we've given you to have that kind of relationship and nurture that um, personal uh, experience that you can have with, uh, with a class to some extent. Um, we've, we can give you a shared notebook, Cathy will talk more about that, um, a voice recorder and the ability to just send messages um, anytime that's suitable. And in terms of the actual curriculum, if I go back to that one for a moment, Sam, we've just recently digitised the whole curriculum. Uh, so it allows you to find very quickly uh, an English level and then uh, a teaching point that you might want to have in a particular lesson or for a particular student. Um, and that's a resource that is at your fingertips um, across our beginner course and our intermediate course. OK. And then uh, just I mentioned this briefly um, at the beginning, we do test at the beginning to see what their level is. We have a short test for reading and listening, which is auto marked. And we can also bring in at the end a full test that also uh, marks writing and speaking. And in both cases, um, it will um, route the learner onto exactly the right part of the beginner course or the right course, um, depending on their test results. OK. So here is the, the course that has been most in use at the moment. Um, it covers all ages, as you can see, from, from children through to adults. Um, it's designed to be um, as interactive. Every screen has something for them to do. They follow a journey around the in, uh, English speaking world and they hear different accents. So it, it exposes them to English as a, a global language. They gain certificates and as they move from one level to the other, and we motivate them. It's very important. Obviously, there's a lot of learning to cram in uh, at this stage, all these letters, all the sounds, uh, through games, animations, and, and rewards. And you'll see a bit more about that uh, later. OK. And then our intermediate course um, does a similar thing, but this time particularly relevant for people coming to the UK because we do focus on a journey around the UK where they, they learn about the country, um, life in the UK, if you like, as they're learning English. Um, so there's over 300 items they can explore about famous people, places, um, traditions, history, and so on. And we have included a dictionary in this course, an Oxford Learner's Dictionary, and it does cover in a structured way from module one to module 10, all the basics of English grammar. And one of the, uh, the most interesting comments we've got back from an adult student in Glasgow was uh, that it, he, he likened it to a good Netflix series. Now, I haven't had a call from Netflix yet, but you never know. Okay, thanks, Sam. 
Uh, we've got some additional resources there just to, um, to give them more options. Uh, there's a grammar guide which has been endorsed by the SQA. Very, very simple, no jargon. It just gives them lots and lots of examples of the things they might be struggling with a bit. Um, some animations, which are simply uh, a way of giving them uh, some examples of how native speakers uh, will use English, all done through animation. Um, and then if they're not too sure about some grammar points, they can always go in and, and check out by using our, our games, which um, take, take them different parts of the UK. So they'll maybe have a game based on a North Sea oil break or the Beatles Museum in Liverpool or the Tower of London. So the, the grammar is, is not done in a sort of tedious multiple choice way. There's something there for them to, uh, to learn about the country as they're maybe practicing a particular grammar point. Okay. Now here are the three choosers that we worked with. You'll meet Valeria, I hope, later on. Um, they were a fantastic addition to our team when we were working with Dundee uh, Council and um, were able to just provide that extra pastoral support that is very important as well when people are settling into a, a totally new environment. Okay. Now I want to move on very, very quickly to um, another important uh, partnership that we developed with East Midlands Council and in this case, we had a big employer working with us as well, the NHS, and that made a massive difference to, to um, the journey that we can take learners on. Here, um, we were working with a group of Hong Kong nurses in, in the UK who required, it was a, a, a really difficult exam, advanced level exam, they had to um, achieve before they could think of applying for a job. So we've developed a very um, interactive scenario-based uh, course leading to um, a mock exam, which then lets them know if they're ready to take this particular um, Cambridge exam. Uh, and uh, Thea will tell you more about that later, but here is an outline um, who we're working with, the East Midlands Council and the NHS. Um, we were helping, hopefully, to solve the huge recruitment crisis there is in the NHS at the moment by just getting over that initial barrier of a compulsory English language test. Um, again, our solution was not just simply software, but we provided project management and we provided very crucially two very, very specialised OET tutors who help students with the format of the exam, the mock exam, and, and also with some of the issues they were facing in their day to day lives. Uh, and I will leave more of the uh, outcomes of that, but you can see at a glance there uh, what success we were having, the excess success nationally in the OET exam is very low at 30%, and already we are more than double that with the small number that we've been working with uh, so far. Okay. Right, just to round up then, um, I just want to summarise, we bring a lot of these points together by saying that this is a joint effort. We can't do this on our own, which is why we are so happy to see so many of you here this afternoon to work with uh, you and to help you support support the learners that you've got in your area. So whether we're with the council or with a strategic migration partnership or with a college, we've got a, a, a solution that is flexible enough to allow us to do that. We prefer to deliver blended learning rather than just simply self-study. Um, whether those are our tutors or your tutors, it just brings that extra human dimension to, to the learning, which is very, very important for this cohort. We like to set um, some sort of a targets at the beginning in terms of study hours and length of, uh, of study with us, but we've clearly proved from Dundee that three to four months is, is a significant, um, there's a significant improvement during that time. Uh, and then on top of that, um, just that whole business of having somebody keeping an eye on what's happening, giving a little of encouragement to the student, maybe following up on any students that have appear to be dropping out. It's very important to keep that sort of um, motivation going throughout um, throughout their journey with us. So I hope that's given you some idea of how we can work with you to cut costs, how we can achieve real progress in a much shorter time scale, um, and how we can keep people um, on track and, and learning um, to fulfill their, their lives and their ambitions um, from the point they've joined us in in uh, on the digital learning hub so <clears throat> i'm going to hold, hold hand over now to my colleague kathy glover who's going to give you more of an insight into you know, from a tutor's perspective how she has used uh, the hub in both online and offline so thanks so much kathy over to you 
Hi, everyone. So as Anne said, I'm just going to be sort of explaining a few things um, to you very much from a tutor's perspective. And I think as Anne briefly touched on this, there are two things that are really, really um, particularly noteworthy. Um, as you can see, we have a, the tutor resource, which is in the teacher's pack. And um, we also have the collaboration tools. Um, now, the teacher's pack is something, as Anne said, it's something new. And it allows the teachers to have really easy access to the whole of the curriculum. Um, you can see from the, the picture on the slides there that it's a drop down menu. So you select the level and then you can select the type of resource that you want. So it could be a language focus point. It could be a theme or vocabulary area, even looking for some assessments. And once you've chosen this and, and, and put it into the search, then you'll get a very easy access link to help you to, to find, it directs you to the page and you can find any resources that you, you want to use. So this is something you know, new, but it, it's so much easier now for the teachers because um, they can find exactly what they want if it's a more personalized um, activity for a student or whether it's something that they want to cover with the whole class. And then on the other side, you can see that we have the collaboration tools. And again, here we can see that we have a chat, we have the electronic notebook, the electronic voice recorder, and also we have a, a meeting organizer that both teachers and students can use. And they're all very, very user-friendly. Um, you know, it's I've used it with literacy learners and it's, it's not difficult. It's the icons are easily understood. And there's prompts of, of when you even have to allow your microphone for the voice recorder. So if we move on to the next slide now, I'll just go into a little bit more detail here about um, the, the two that I particularly like are the electronic notebook and um, the audio recorder. So again, ever so easy for the students to use. Um, if we look at the, the notebook, um, this allows the students, while they're online, they can make notes, they can do activities connected to the actual course. And once they've saved it, as a tutor, you have an overview of everybody in your cohort's notebook. Um, then, obviously, the tutor then, very easy, they go into the notebooks and they can respond straight away with a message, corrections, feedback on anything that um, the students have written. This is particularly easy because, you know, a lot of online courses, you're trying to get your students to email you work or, you know, um, sort of. So, um, yeah, it's it's an excellent um, it's an excellent way of actually getting the students to to get the work to you, because sometimes they can do the work, but they fall down on actually how do I get this work to you via an electronic method. Um, and then the audio recorder, that's excellent for. Um, for the students because it's great speaking practice. Sometimes if you're working online, it's quite difficult to get individual students to feel confident enough to answer. Um, but this, the students is recording in their own time in their own personal space. And the joy of this is then that the um, feedback can be very personalized. So you can help students correct their pronunciation by modeling and even their intonation. Um, and with both of these, the, the tutor can also give, as Anne mentioned before, the tutor's role can be slightly pastoral. So you can also offer um, messages of encouragement, send them you know, a voice message, which is very personalized. And I think for the voice messages, this gives students access to, to meaningful listening practice as well. So let's move on now as well to look at the next slide, which is a, um, using the hub um, within the classroom. And what I'm going to speak about using on the classroom, you can also actually use um, on, online if you're doing, say, a Zoom lesson or, or using Teams. But this particular um, experience in, in a class setting is, is really useful with low level learners when you're beginning to get them on to the, the courses and everything. It's good to get everybody set up in the classroom. Students can work together or if they prefer to work individually. But as the tutor, you can just check that you're there to make sure that everybody's on board, that they've understood. Sometimes going right back to the beginning, make sure they've written down passwords if they need to. Um, and you're, you're just being able to see what everybody's doing. Um, 
You can also use it if you have the facility to have a sort of whiteboard that's connected in the classroom. You can also have the students watching, joining in together. And I think this helps you to make sure that everybody's on board and they can all see what they're doing. Um, so it helps with continual assessment as well. You can see how the students are interacting and you can bring some of the resources. You know, I did this when we were in the pandemic. I had, you know, it was online with Zoom and I opened it up and the students were calling out the answers and everything. I could just see how everybody was doing. So that's a, you know, another way that you can use um, all the materials on the hub actually in the classroom. Or as I say, well-prepared teacher can use it online as well. Um, can we move on next to the um, student engagement? That's the final slide from me. And I think it's really important that we, we remember how important student engagement is. And we have to try and encourage the students to become independent learners. That's one of the, one of the important things about any course online. And what's nice is the hub gives the students the opportunity themselves to have a look around, to use um, a variety of supplementary resources. It does help to keep the students engaged and it can offer them um, consolidation exercises. Another thing that's really important is that the students can actually see their progress and their achievements. And as you can see, this can be easily monitored by the students as they go through the course. It's not wordy for low level learners. It's absolutely user friendly. They can see how many of the sections they've done and, and what they've still got to do. And then a final thing that I think is, is nice is that the students can also earn their digital badges and they've got rewards as well that can be collected as they go through the, the course. And I think for a lot of students, this, this kind of can add a, a personal incentive and a challenge for them um, as, as they work through. So there's, there's lots of areas that the one thing that I would say as a tutor, you know, make sure that you know the course. The better you know the course as well, the better that you can help your students and the better that you can support them and encourage them. So that's that's all from me. Happy to answer any questions later on. And I'm going to hand over now to um, Thea. Thanks, Cathy. Um, hi, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to share with you some of the insights about two of the projects that I um, worked on and that Anne has touched on earlier. Um, the first project that I'd like to talk about is our ESOL project that we ran in collaboration with Dundee City Council and their Ukrainian refugees. So if we rewind to September last year, um, we had about 14 weeks um, to work with 56 Ukrainian adult learners. Um, they were of all ages. Some were in their 20s, others, others in their late 60s, um, many of whom living you know, with hosts or some living in hotels, some with and without Wi-Fi. Um, and obviously we tested their level at the start um, and we noted that you know, after doing reading and listening tests at the beginning that all of their um, levels were coming back at the European Framework A level. So just to give you an indication, um, their reading stats at the start, we had um, A0 level was 62%. And for listening, we had A0 level about 23% um, at A0, sorry, and A1, 30%, and A2 were 46%. Um, in those three months, um, just short of half of the cohort, so 42%, um, completed our first course, our um, journey to basic skills course, and they've then progressed on to the next course. And they also had, in addition to that, they had 12 weeks of English tutorials um, online with our tutors. Once they'd finished basic skills, um, we tested them again um, post course um, with their full English skills test. Um, and we were noting that, you know, 100% had improved their listening level. Um, and 92% had improved their reading level. Um, so post course, just to kind of give you an idea, 46% um, of students, um, their reading level was a B1. And 85% of students, their listening level was either then a B1 or a B2 level. Um, in terms of what for me stood out about this project, I felt it was really flexible. Um, it felt responsive. It felt, um, unique that we were able to give them the ability to work um, weekly on an online basis with our native Ukrainian tutors. Um, you'll be hearing from Valeria shortly, um, and I'm sure she'll tell you her experience. Um, and in terms of it, to give you an idea of the time commitment of these um, users, we ask um, our learner agreement that we ask um, users to commit to is a minimum of 
three hours a week and um, some of them gave that and some gave um, more obviously or, or much more in one case of one user we had one user who'd um, studied 138 hours on their basic skills course and um, so they were averaging kind of nine hours a week but in general the average time per user was 35 hours across our basic skills course. Um, in terms of looking forward, um, we continue to work with Dundee um, and their admin team um, and the learners continue to have access to the platform. So they're still working away um, and able to finish um, basic skills and now on to their journey to English um, course. Um, the second project that I'd like to share with you was um, our OET pilot that Anne mentioned that was run in partnership with East Midlands and the NHS. And this project specifically obviously was targeting those Hong Kong BNOs who'd come from um, Hong Kong to the UK. So we had people with a lot of um, nursing experience and we had a longer period of time um, to work with them. We had six months and we were um, offering 20 student places to work with these um, individuals from June of last year until December. Um, just to give you an idea, half of them um, at the beginning of the course were enrolled um, at B2 level, so they went straight into our Destination OET course, and the other half um, after testing, their level was more at B1, so we asked them to start on our Journey to English course. To give you a bit of background about the demographics of this group, um, we were working with, um, in the end, we signed up 19 users, um, predominantly female to male, it was a ratio of three to one. We knew that they were older learners, mostly in the sort of 41 to 50 age bracket. Um, many of them were unemployed at the course start um, and they had lots of different barriers to learning, for example, childcare um, and family commitments. But we also could see that they clearly had um, a lot of nursing experience under their belt. So collectively that cohort had, I think, more than 300 hours of nursing experience. Um, as, as I mentioned, the offering here was another blended learning course. Um, students were able to work through the platform independently, but they were also working with our specialist um, OET tutors in addition. Um, and behind the scenes, they had me um, chasing them up, um, probably emailing them and keeping on track of them, you know, monitoring their progress, making sure that they had regular student communication, um, and then liaising and feeding back to, to our stakeholders with reports and weekly progress um, to make sure that they felt involved and that they were getting that feedback that they needed. I think in terms of the uniqueness of this programme, it, it, it's again, it's blended. It means it fits in with their lives. Um, you know, these were cre clearly very busy people who needed um, that flexibility, whether they were commuting or at the bus stop, whatever they happened to be doing, um, they, needed, they needed to be able to access the, the course, you know, as and when suited them. Um, and to give you an indication of time commitment, um, one learner had spent about 40 hours um, studying on OET at, um, to give them a successful path. So Anne touched on the results earlier. We've had four learners pass of this cohort pass this OET exam. And um, so we're looking at, um, I think it's a 66% pass rate so far for all those who've sat. And we're currently monitoring the others as they book and sit now that they are um, gradually becoming exam ready. Um, and in the meantime, students have still been able to keep up their skills using and um, all of the, the platform has to offer. So the tools that Cathy's just mentioned, like our voice recorder or our notebook, and they're still able to access that at the moment. Um, I think what made this project different to work on was that we had um, buy-in from the NHS um, from the word get-go and that, you know, we had that sort of three-pronged approach as it were. So we had um, East Midlands, the NHS and ourselves um, and everyone, you know, working in partnership to make sure that they were really invested in the project from the start and determined for it to succeed. Um, it's been a huge benefit to have the NHS employers involvement here, for example, for those who were maybe seeking a kind of starter role out of healthcare assistant to get their foot in the door and um, they've been given direct access to talk to the NHS and be able to you know to, to start those conversations and looking at gaining employment. Um, I'd like to just really briefly touch on what's next on the horizon. Um, currently I'm working on another ESOL project um, with colleagues in Staffordshire 
and their homes for Ukraine team and they've just recently added a second cohort of learners including some Afghan learners this time um, so we're working with them at the moment on that that provision and we're also just launching this month a new ESOL project with Wales and their strategic migration partnership um, where we'll be working this time with Hong Kong BNOers um, on um, getting them kind of work ready in the next three months um, and, and then boosting their levels of English. Um, and that's all from me. Um, I will hand over to Valeria now, who um, is one of our Dundee project tutors. Hi, everyone. My name is Valeria. Yes, and I am an English teacher with Click to Learn, but also I am one of the Ukrainians who was fleeing the war in Ukraine and who settled up in Great Britain. So when I just came to the GP, I started to look for a job right away. But I should say that I was able to do that only because I knew English. So I came as an English teacher, so basically I knew how to speak English. It was much easier for me. And I can understand why it is so hard for some of the Ukrainians even to start this process of looking for a job because they literally don't know a word in English. Um, when I started looking for a job, I uh, googled all the options, so all the schools or some institutes in Great Britain that offered some courses or some uh, lessons for Ukrainians, and uh, that's why uh, that's how actually I found Click to Learn. And when I found out what kind of service Click to Learn um, has to offer to Ukrainians, I thought, wow, that's something really, really different from the others because it's not the regular English class that you have to attend in person. That's something that you have right there in your computer or in your phone, and it's always with you. So you have an access to all the materials everywhere you go. You can check on the new words when you're in the bus, for example. I find it very useful for people who just came to another country and who are trying to um to like i don't know to do their best in this country so uh, the only problem that i saw at that time when we started for example working with dundee council is that a lot of our students were elderly people and it was hard for them to understand how to use the materials but actually according to what i saw with dundee students it took them very short time to learn how to use the digital hub and to learn how to um how to do the exercises in this learning material so don't worry about that uh, overall, I'm really, really happy to be a part of this process of teaching Ukrainians, giving them the opportunity to become uh, part of English society and to contribute to uh, everything they can do. So thank you very much. Uh, now I'm ready to handle to our next speaker, uh, Kate, please. Thank you very much, Valeria. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Kate Pino, and I am an OET tutor for the program that Anne and Thea have described. Uh, I was working with the students until recently, until the end of the pilot in December. I still have some contact with those students. And um, with the whole support of the whole team, uh, we were able to accompany the students uh, through the Destination OET program pilot. Um, so we met the students in a um, small number of live webinars, and then I intervened with the students in tutorial um, context. And um, then Thea behind was in very regular contact with those students. And as Thea mentioned, they're very highly skilled, experienced nurses, and um, success in the OET is a big hurdle for them when they get uh, ready for their new career in the NHS, a new stage of their career in the NHS. And as Anne mentioned, the standards for the test are very high and the success rates are relatively low for an exam um, like this. It's a very difficult one. So because the students are dispersed um, around and about, it's very hard for them to get to do any classes in, in college if there are any available. And so they tend to study at home. Uh, they look again and again at past papers, and this is very solitary, very boring, um, and they are, it's often impractical because it's, it's high concentration and very little kind of feedback or interaction. So Destination OET, the program, 
um, that we've been working with with Click to Learn is uh, accessible on all devices, just like Valeria said for the Journey to English and Journey to Basic Skills course, uh, available on all the devices. And the activities are shorter and much more manageable um, in terms of the time uh, that the students will spend. And it's a completely different experience than studying these past papers. And um, it fits around the nurses' daily lives. They can see the amount of time it's going to take them to do uh, an activity. And so it's really very much based on, on fitting around their needs. Um, importantly, I think to mention is that click to learn focus on vocational training. It means that uh, my colleagues were able to transform those materials very effectively into these real life scenarios. And so the, um, the program provides an opportunity for students to prepare for the exam, but also for the workplace after the exam. 